All right, how's everybody doing today, boys and girls? Today we're going to take a look at the beginning of chapter four, and there's a lot of stuff in this chapter, but it's all about triangles, one of our favorite three-sided shapes. In fact, it's our only three-sided shape. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first section here of applying triangle sum properties. Now, when we first start talking about triangles, we're going to have to classify them. Now, there's two ways to classify triangles. One is by their sides, and the other is by their angles. Now, there are three ways to classify them by their sides, and four ways to classify triangles by their angles. Now, the first one we're going to take a look at for scaling, Scaling triangles have no congruent sides. Not one side is the same. Isosceles, these are going to have two congruent sides. And equilateral triangles, why? They have three congruent sides. So when you take a look at a picture for an scale, a scaling triangle, one of the things you're going to look at is that none of the sides are going to be the same. Now, sometimes you can just visually look at it, but other times we'll actually have numbers there. So one side might be a 3, one might be a 7, and the last side might be maybe an 8. Uh, so when you take a look at a scaling triangle, the measurements, the lengths of all the sides, well, they're all different. Now, isosceles triangle, oh, this one's going to get fun because we're going to talk a lot about some of the properties. For this guy, isosceles triangle is going to have at least two congruent sides. They're going to be marked like that. Now, what that means is that their lengths are going to be the same. So maybe one side is seven and another side is also seven. So both of them would have the same length or they could be denoted by the little hash marks that we see in the triangle. Now, equilateral triangle that's going to have three congruent sides and when we have that that'll just be denoted by three hashtags now if we know the side of one of them is seven then that means the other two sides well we could deduce that they are seven also so equilaterals have all three sides the same and isosceles only have two congruent sides while scaling they've got nothing going on none of their sides are the same length all right, so now let's talk a look, take a look at the ways to classify triangles by their angles. We've got acute, right, obtuse, and equiangular. Now, our acute triangle is three acute angles. And acute, remember, means that they are all less than 90. A right triangle is one right angle. Obtuse has one obtuse angle. And equally angular has three congruent angles. So let's take a look at what this means in a picture. Now, an acute triangle has three acute angles. So when you take a look at a picture like that, all the angles on the inside, well, they're going to be less than 90. So I could have 30, and I could have 70, and then if I add those two up, 30 plus 70 gives me 100, and so my other angle will be 80. More on that in a little bit. Now, for the right triangle, right triangle is just going to have one right angle. Sometimes it might be drawn like this, other times it might be drawn some other way, but at the end of the day, there's going to be one right angle in there. An obtuse angle, whoa, for the obtuse angle, that's going to be one angle in there that's more than 90 degrees. So say we had an angle that was 105, well, then that would be an obtuse triangle. Now, the equiangular triangles, whoa, that's one of my favorite ones. Say that word three times real fast. Equiangular, equiangular, equiangular. That's right. Now, this triangle is going to have three congruent angles. So we could mark it like this, this, and this. And that means all three of those angles are going to be congruent. So those are the four different ways you could classify triangles by their angles, along with the three different ways you could classify triangles by their sides. Now, we've got a lot to do here in example number one. Check out this bugger. This guy is long. We've got to use this figure for one to answer each one of the following questions. For A, we've got to use a distance formula to find length of each side. For B, we've got to classify the triangle by its sides. And C, we've got to determine length of the right triangle. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. So let's take a look at this side PQ over here. We're going to use a distance formula to get after that one first. Now, do you remember the distance formula? I'm sure that you do. So you're going to start out by writing that down and then substituting in and simplifying your square root to come up with the length 
of segment PQ. If you think you got it, go ahead and hit pause and then see what you end up with. If you want to go through it together, that's cool. Here we go right now. Check it out. Now, the length of segment PQ. Of course, we'll write our formula. We'll substitute our values in. And then when we go through and do our adding, we'll end up with the square root of 50 for PQ. Now, don't just leave it like that because that's wrong. we got to simplify that all the way down to 5 square root of 2. And if you uh, remember how to do that, that is phenomenal. If not, you're going to need to take a look at simplifying square roots in another video. Now, when we have a look at this, one of the next pieces we're going to take a look at, we are going to take a look at and find the length of the piece OQ. So let's go ahead and find that. If you think you've got this down, go ahead and find the length of OQ and see what you come up with on this. So how'd you do with this one? Hopefully, you at least got down to the square root of 45. Now, if you're really good, you were able to simplify that down to 3 square root of 5 because that's going to be the expectation. That's what you got to do for that. So make sure you get simplifying square roots down. It's a math skill you definitely need to have. Now, our very last segment that we've got to find the length of is the segment PO. So, PO is kind of like PU, but we're talking about PO. That's right. So, go ahead and find the length of PO. Hopefully, you got it by now. You can find the length of any segment using that distance formula. Plug it in. See what you get. Simplify. Let's see what happens here. Woo, just square root of 5. What? No simplifying on this one? Well, that's all right. We're pretty cool with that. We, we did all that work, and we still got to do section part B and part C. Holy moly. Now, let's take a look at part B. Classify triangle PQO by its sides. Now, if we take a look at each one of my segment lengths for PQ, OQ, and PO, all of those are different. And if a triangle has three different side lengths, well, we just learned that that means the triangle is going to be scaling. So make sure you write this sentence down in your notes, just the way that I have it there. For section C, we've got to determine if this triangle is a right triangle. So, hmm, how the heck you think we're going to try something like that? Oh my gosh, we're going to have to do some slope stuff. That's right. So, one of the first things we want to do is find the slope of each one of our segments. Now, we're going to find the slope of PO, the slope of OQ, and the slope of PQ. Go ahead and use the slope formula. Or, if you're going to count using rise over run, but make sure that you notate it like this. Don't get lazy and just put a bunch of numbers all willy-nilly on there with an equal sign or whatever. Make sure your work is neat and it's organized just like this. So find the slope of each one of those three pieces, and then let's compare our slopes and see what we come up with. Well, how'd you do? Hopefully, for the slope of PO, you came up with negative 2. For the slope of OQ, you got 1 half after you're done reducing. And for the slope of PQ, you came up with 1 7th. If you didn't, go back and double check your arithmetic. Now, for each one of these, what I want you to do first is take a look at the slopes of PO and OQ, those two segments. Check them out. If you notice the product of those two slopes is negative 1, give yourself a pat on the back, because that's right. They are going to have a product of negative 1. Or you could also describe those two slopes as being negative reciprocals. Now, if slopes have a product of negative 1 or if slopes are negative reciprocals, then that means those two segments will form a right angle. And if they form a right angle, by golly, that means we're going to have a right triangle. So now when we go to describe this, I want you guys to describe this one of two ways. The first thing you could do is say, since the slopes of PO and OQ have a product of negative 1, triangle PQO is a right triangle. The other way you could describe it would be the second way. Since the slopes of PO and OQ are negative reciprocals, triangle PQO is a right triangle. That is a lot of stuff in this problem, but I want you guys to make sure that you write down the conclusion on that. Don't just be satisfied with writing down the slopes. Make sure you also write a sentence to justify your reasoning. That's so much in this problem, and if you guys held in, good for you, because I know that's a lot of stuff. Now, go ahead and take a look at the next video in this section, uh, and that'll finish up section 4-1, and then I will see you guys soon in class, and you guys make sure that you have a great day. All right, peace.